Okay guys, so um, what I did is I wrote some stuff on a forum to give uh, some information about Fermi, which is NVIDIA's new series of DirectX 11 graphics cards. And uh, since I wrote it down on my favorite computer forum ever, Computer Juice, I'm just going to read it for you because it's better when I read it than it is off the top of my head. So um, you look in there, I'm not going to be looking at the camera, sorry, I know it's not exactly the proper thing to do when you're trying to film, but here it goes. So as we all know by now, the Fermi models from NVIDIA have arrived, and there seems to be a lot of speculation about Fermi when compared to ATI's cards. As we can see, the top of the line NVIDIA card is now capable of DirectX 11, just as are the uh, ATI models. But of course there needs to be further in-depth analysis. People have said that the Fermi models, such as the GTX 480, would have a price that would far tower ATI's best card, the 5970. But, as we can see from the following links from Newegg, that's not true. The links will be posted in the description, so be sure to check it out. Uh, Newegg is an American site, so they don't really ship to any other country but Canada, other than America. So, anyone who's international watching this video, you might be a little out of luck, but you can still be able to view it just so you can see the price differences. Now, the links posted are of the lowest cost version of each card the models of which are the GTX 480 and the 5970. Now that the price issue is out of the way, we come to the performance specs. A key thing to note about Fermi is that it is, is a, it's a single GPU card. Unlike ATI's 5970, which is a dual GPU card. Why does this matter? Well, as you may know, many high-end games require a lot of power, but not all of them support dual GPUs. And although the two GPUs are on one card, it's still as if you're doing SLI, or in this case, Crossfire, since it's ATI. What, and it's hard to max out these games sometimes, but what makes it even harder is the fact that, as I've said before, they don't, some of them, even though are very high end, don't have dual GPU support. So thus, the 5970, despite its raw power, can only use one of its two GPUs. And in return, the card cannot be used to its full potential. But, you take the GTX 480, which is a single GPU card. It can make the most and use all the card of what it has to offer. However, one thing that ATI wins over NVIDIA is that the 5970 has two gigabytes of VRAM which in games such as GTA 4 that use massive amounts of VRAM it comes in handy. Especially when you're running ultra high resolutions if you have a really high res monitor or you happen to be dual monitoring or triple monitoring using things like iFinity or NVIDIA's surround thing that they have now. Um, in case you're wondering, the GTX 480 has around one and a half gigs of VRAM. So, it's not two, one and a half, two gigs, it's not such a huge jump, but it is significant enough that it might matter in some games. When comparing the two cards to their fullest, the GTX 480 in reality is only about 5% better than the 5970. Well, even, even if you're doing like DirectX 11 games with a lot of tessellation, I mean, in, in some areas of tessellation, the GTX 280 is a lot better than the 5970, but overall we're talking, it, it's really only about a 5% um, gain. Uh, but, although that is pretty cool because you're taking, you're, you're comparing two GPUs to one GPU, so that's a pretty big jump in technology. Now comes the power usage. Despite the 5970 being a dual GPU card, it still consumes much less power than the GTX 480, making it a much more power efficient card. See, what the, fifth, what the uh, 5970 does is when it's not really in use or when it doesn't need both GPUs, it only uses one, cutting off power to the second GPU, saving a lot of power, especially while idling. But even when it's at max, usage it's still significantly less power 
ATI has always been pretty good about their power consumption. NVIDIA tends to go gun ho when it comes to maximum performance. They don't really sacrifice much in the name of efficiency. But uh, moving on. Uh, unique features. Uh, both have something in common, which uh, ATI has the iFinity, which allows three monitors at once, but NVIDIA has something that does the same thing. It's called like surround something. I don't remember. Uh, one thing ATI does not have that NVIDIA has is NVIDIA's physics, which this physics software allows the GPU to render real-time physics in-game. Um, what happened? The reason why ATI doesn't have this is what happened is a long time ago there used to be this company called Agia, and they would make what you, what they call a physics card. Now what happened to Agia, and the reason why their card never caught on, is because Nvidia bought them out and adapted Agia's physics technology right into Nvidia's graphics cards. So thus, Nvidia is the one with the physics, not ATI. But maybe in the future, I don't know, maybe in the future, ATI will come up with something to counter NVIDIA's physics. I'm not sure. Another accessory that NVIDIA has is its revolutionary 3D gaming. There's special equipment that you can buy that NVIDIA sells that will make gaming like a 3D movie. Bullets will pop out and come towards you out of the screen and other things will too. And it's really cool, actually, but it's really expensive. And uh, it requires a 120 hertz monitor or higher. Um, there's over 80 games that support it. Games like Left 4 Dead, the Left 4 Dead series, really, really popular games. Not just crappy games that you don't know about, but popular games. And more games are coming that will support it. And thus, NVIDIA has another triumph over ATI. So at, at this point, it's really all about what you need the card for. Um, it's either ATI's power-efficient muscle or NVIDIA's raw power and accessories. So it's up to you, but at this point, given the prices especially, so be sure to check out the links that I put on the, in the uh, description, it seems like Fermi might just be a success because Fermi, every Fermi card, whether it be the GTX 480 or 470, is sold out on Newegg the very first day it came out. This is like a repeat of NVIDIA's 8800 GT a few years ago. The first day the 8800 GT came out, it was sold out everywhere on the internet. Everywhere. I had to be on a waiting list for weeks. But, it seems like Nvidia's done it again. But, um, only time will tell if this card is worth its money. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has informed you a little bit more about uh, the difference between Fermi and ATI's cards. But, um, best of luck to both brands. Competition between these guys is great. It will only produce better cards in the end. And whether you be a fanboy of ATI or NVIDIA or whether you're not a fanboy of anything, it's just best luck to both brands. They're both great brands. They're doing awesome, and maybe one day we can we can expect something twice as good as what they have right now, which I'm sure that day will come. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video, and um, this is Andrew Escavel. Have a good one.